Hello, fellow mech warriors, Mage Leader here. Before we begin, I want to provide some transparency. I was provided a review copy of this book by Blaine Pardo himself, and I have said before that I am a fan of his work. This means that while I have tried to keep my mind as open and critical as possible, I inevitably hold a positive bias. However, I have not been asked to say anything specific about this book. Hell, I haven't even been officially required to review it as an exchange for the access. All that was sent to me was a download link and some positive vibes. I say this mostly because, if you couldn't already tell, I enjoyed Splashdown a great deal. But this is far from typical fangirling. While I greatly enjoy Blaine's writing, there have been a few nitpicks with some previous stories that I was expecting to find going in. I read his controversial Blue Dawn novel and found similar things there, though the book itself was still quite enjoyable. So imagine my surprise when none of these issues surfaced in Splashdown. That's right, this isn't just another solid entry from our favorite former Battletech author. In my humble opinion, Splashdown is Blaine Pardo's best book yet. So without any further ado, let's dive right in and talk about why. For those who don't know, Splashdown isn't just another independent sci-fi novel. It is connected with a brand new IP known as Land and Sea by Creative Juggernaut. If I had to describe it simply, I would say imagine if Pacific Rim had a baby with Battletech, and during the act of lovemaking, they left a 1950s alien invasion movie playing on the bedroom TV. But I also feel like that description, while objectively the most clever and humorous thing you will hear today, is also a bit lacking. Because while that may leave you feeling like you're getting a B-movie in book form, I can assure you that there is far more at play here. Land and Sea, much like Battletech, is a far harder variety of sci-fi than your typical extraterrestrial invasion flick, and Splashdown reads more like a Tom Clancy political thriller than a lesser work of alien schlock. Hell, there's a submarine battle in the book that feels like it wouldn't be too out of place in The Hunt for Red October, a scene so well executed and gripping that I could almost hear Basil Polidori's soundtrack. The bulk of the story is spent on an ensemble of human characters, each one interesting, though some are admittedly a touch more compelling than others. The cast is phenomenal overall, with some major standouts such as Dana Blaze, a ruthless femme fatale journalist, and Captain Ash Slade, a military analyst who could give Jack Ryan a run for his money. No one feels superfluous or boring, and I feel like this is the book's greatest strength. Pardo has written excellent characters in the past, but I found that his older works tend to have one or two interesting ones while the rest could feel a bit hollow at times. That is not a problem that this book has. Each and every person that we follow feels fully realized, including Lance Corporal Natalia Falto. Yes, this story contains a strong female character who doesn't suck ass, which is something that I was beginning to think was impossible. Take notes, modern writers. It's possible to make a woman fight as a marine without making the reader want to gouge their eyes out. So the characters are fantastic, but how about the plot? I would say that the story overall is quite solid, if a bit on the simple side. There's nothing particularly earth-shattering about the plot in a vacuum, but that doesn't mean that it's entirely boring or predictable. Alien invasion stories tend to feel quite similar by their very nature, and it's the subtle ways that a story handles those common elements that makes them stand out from the crowd. Yes, big crabs come out of the sea, but there's far more to them than just being big, scary monsters. The aliens in Splashdown are highly intelligent and technologically advanced, though altogether unlike us in nearly every respect. They use tactics, units with dedicated roles, and they do not pull any punches. As interesting as the creatures and concepts themselves is the military's response. The reaction to their discovery is handled exceptionally well, and watching the characters slowly uncover the truth about what's happening beneath the waves is both satisfying and believable. While the twists and turns of the plot won't exactly rock your world, I think that the more grounded take on a typically cheesy premise is very refreshing and worth the price of admission all on its own. If you've read Battletech, then you're probably familiar with the overall vibe. They're PG-13 at their absolute worst, erring more on the family-friendly side of things. With Land and Sea, it seems that Blaine has been allowed to take the gloves off because this book doesn't fuck around. There is death and lots of it, and it's not limited just to combatants or even to adults. A few scenes made me feel pretty uneasy, as any sort of horrific alien activity should. 
Some of the concepts are genuinely frightening and reminded me of Stephen King's stories like The Mist and The Langoliers. Trust me, you'll know it once you get to it. While it never reaches a gratuitous level, it did pry the occasional shit and that's fucked up out of me. So while the story does have its moments of humanity fuck yeah, just know that not everything is sunshine and rainbows. Be aware that this book can get dark. If I had one point of criticism to make against the story, I think it would be that I personally would have liked to see more of the Asher suits. The ones we do get to see are used sparingly, which increases their impact, but at the same time I was hoping to get more familiar with them. Toward the beginning of the story, we're told that there are a wide variety of different variants, but only four are shown to us and half of those are used only in training exercises. Honestly though, it's less of a knock against this book and more of a reason to get excited about the next one. Since the war breaks out toward the end of this novel, it's pretty safe to assume that there's going to be a lot more Asher combat in the next installments. Outside of that and a couple exposition dumps that feel just a little bit stretched out, I'm hard pressed to find anything to complain about. All I can say in summary is that this book kicks ass and that I am sold on the land and sea universe. There's some fantastic imagination at work here and I can't wait to see where it goes next. Splashdown will release on January 12th and is available for pre-order right now, link in the description. I was not asked to push it toward you or try to convince you to spend your hard-earned sea bills, but I'm going to do it anyway. If you're a fan of Pardo's work, or better yet, just a fan of science fiction in general, then you owe it to yourself to give this one a read. If you want to support a smaller, independent creator and demonstrate to CGL just how badly they fucked up by letting this man go, then put your money where your mouth is and grab a copy. The book has already hit Amazon's bestseller list, but I think we can outdo any of the competition that it's up against right now. Eat your heart out, Cancel Mob, because Blaine isn't gone. He's putting out his best work in years, and Catalyst is going to be kicking themselves for listening to you. So that's my thoughts on Splashdown, the first book in the Land and Sea series. I hope you all enjoyed it, and if you'd like to see more reviews like this, then let me know down in the comments. My own novel, The Rockets of Nemen, is progressing smoothly through its first draft, and will hopefully be complete sometime in 2023. This is an exciting time for all of us, where independent creators are rising up against the woke garbage of mainstream entertainment. Thank you all for helping us to become the culture and giving me the inspiration to strike out on my own projects. Splashdown is proof that you don't need a massive company name behind you to make an impact. So if you've got a story idea itching away at the back of your mind, leave a comment telling us what your idea is, then get out there and make it a reality. Congratulations, Blaine Pardo. Thank you for the review copy. Keep up the good work. And until next time, this is Mage Leader, signing off.